Hello everyone, thank you for being here with us for our video worship service. It's always a blessing to share these worship services with you. And I always thank God that you are being blessed by this opportunity to hear God's Word and be filled with God's Spirit. A couple quick announcements as we get started. Um, the next drive through community dinner is October 15th at 5.30 p.m. Again, it's outside of our fellowship hall. Um, the menu this month is a barbecue chicken thigh, um, baked potato, peas, and a cupcake. So hopefully you'll be able to be here for that. Also, our annual Trunk or Treat event is on October 24th from 5 to 7 p.m. That will also be out in our parking lot. So bring your children over for that. It's a safe trick-or-treating event that we host every year, and we're delighted to be able to bring it to you this year as well. Thank you again for being with us, and now let us begin our service. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Also with you. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shades of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all the peoples, the sheet that is spread over all the nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all the faces, and the disgrace of his people will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on this day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord from whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Here ends the reading. We will read Psalm 23 responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. 
Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here ends our psalm. The second reading is from Philippians chapters 4, verses 1 through 9. My brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, Stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Yodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers who named, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, Whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Here ends the reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets, and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of our Lord. A phrase you'll hear sometimes in our current political conversations is income gap. And what it refers to is the gap between the wealthiest people in the country and everybody else. You'll hear references, for example, to the top 1%, the people who make the most money. And truth be told, that 1% makes a whole bunch of money billions of dollars a year in some cases. And because we live in a time when we think everything is unique to us, you might think that income gaps didn't exist in the past, but you know what? They did. They existed back in Jesus' day. And back in Jesus' day, way back then, there was a huge gap between the top 1% and everybody else. The difference between then and now is more about the breakdown of the other 99%. In our time, 
There are a lot of incomes between the other nine, the 99%. A whole range of incomes from quite a bit, actually, all the way down to next to nothing. Today, we have people who are pretty well off living beside people who are really struggling to get by. Back in Jesus' day, there weren't so many levels. If you were not one of the really wealthy, you were probably struggling. You were probably living out in a, lifetime, a lifestyle that today we might call um, subsistence level or sustainable. You made enough food if you were a farmer. You made enough money if you were a tradesman or a craftsperson or something like that to provide for your daily means most of the time. You weren't starving or anything, but you also never had anything extra, really. You didn't have savings. You didn't have access to luxury goods. You didn't have access to the really good food. You know, things like meat. Meat was a rarity for most people back then. You didn't get really good wine. You got kind of cheap stuff you made yourself. Those things, you know, meat, good wine, the good stuff, that wasn't part of your normal daily diet. It's something you didn't really have. And all of that just is to lead into Jesus' parable today. And yeah, I know, it's another one of those dark, troubling, end times, final judgment parables that Jesus seems to be telling a lot these days. But when he starts out this parable by saying, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king throwing a wedding banquet. The bulk of his audience, you know, the folks who are standing there who have that subsistence level income, you know what? Their ears are going to perk up at that. Because wedding banquets were big deals. For one reason, they would last for days. And if you were invited to one, what you could really count on was getting really, really good food. You know, the good stuff, the stuff you don't get at home, like meat. And you get the really good wine. Not your usual diet, in other words. These kind of banquets were so exciting and so amazing to the folks that the image became a standard image for the final victory of God. It's what that Isaiah reading is referencing to it, when God is promising this feast on the holy mountain, you know, with the well-aged wines and the rich food filled with marrow. Look, sucking marrow out of a bone is not my idea of a great meal, but back then it was, okay? It was good times for them. This was rare stuff. This was great. This was not your normal fare. So again, Jesus starts out with an image that is just going to grab these folks' attention. And the king sends out the invites. And you can just kind of imagine that the folks in the crowd there, they're going to be jealous. You know, because these folks are getting invited to this wedding banquet. And, and well, that's kind of when things go wrong. Because, well, the invited guests won't come. They had other things to do. They had better things to do. And I think the folks listening to this would hear that and go, wait, whoa, 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 what? what? They won't go? Are they nuts? Who doesn't go to a wedding banquet? I mean, especially a royal wedding banquet. That's the best of the best. They would be thinking, you invite me, I'm there right now, let's go. How do you not go? Of course you go. Now, okay, they don't go, and Jesus takes us down this dark path, you know, with the murdered slaves and the vengeful king who kills all the invitees and burns their town down and all of that. It's all that kind of harsh, final judgment, end time stuff that we don't need to focus on today, all right? We can set that aside for now. I want to skip that and go to what the king does next after all the bloodshed. He invites new guests. He still is going to throw the party. And this new guest list would really connect with Jesus' audience because the king invites, well, basically them. Ordinary folks, people off of the streets, people who don't get to go to such lavish things like this. People who will enjoy beyond words the food and the drink that the king will provide because they don't get this kind of stuff ever. And they will show up in droves and the hall will be filled up in no time at all 
because this is special beyond words to the folks who get that second invite. I would guess we're those folks. The folks who get the second invite. But even those folks back then, they, you and me here today, we still face the same question that the parable poses. Will we go? Will we show up to the banquet? You have to have figured out by now that this banquet is God's banquet. Will we show up to God's banquet? Or will we have other things to do? Will we say we have, but we got better things to do. We're busy. We don't have time for this stuff. Will we be the people who say yes? Or the people who say no? It's an important question. It's a vital question because, because see, this thing we're doing here today, church, worship, it's a version of God's banquet. It's a local version of what God is preparing for us at the end. It's a glimpse. It's a foretaste of the heavenly banquet yet to come. And yeah, look, I understand. That little tiny piece of bread and that little sip of wine, it ain't a feast. I get that. But it prepares us for the eternal feast in its own small way. And the question is there. Do we come? Do we show up? I had a real simple thought about this parable this week. I, I could have summed up, I could have saved you all 11 and a half minutes of your life right now and just said this. If God invites you to a party, show up. Go. Be part of it. I thought about what Woody Allen once said. Remember, Woody, Woody Allen famously said, 80% of life is just showing up. Well, I want to say today, that 100% of faith is just showing up. Showing up in worship. Whether it's on a video, whether it's in person, showing up. Showing up in the world, outside of church and outside of worship. Showing up as a child of God. Showing up as an agent of grace and a messenger of love. Showing up as one who loves unconditionally and as one who welcomes unconditionally. Showing up as the one who is able to talk the talk and walk the walk of faith. Showing up to bring peace and hope, comfort and support to others. Showing up as the one who rejoices always, as Paul said in, in the reading today. Rejoice always, not because we are Pollyannas, but because we know the limitless scope and power of God's healing, forgiving, and renewing love in our lives. Speaking of forgiving love, I don't want to forget the end of the parable. You know, the guest who doesn't have the wedding robe... You know what happens to him. He gets pitched. He gets tossed out into the outer darkness with the weeping and the gnashing of teeth and all that stuff. But why? Because he doesn't have the right clothes on? See, I don't think that's the issue. I don't really think he gets kicked out because he doesn't have a robe on. I think he gets kicked out because he doesn't answer the king. I think it's a silence that gets him in trouble. Because you know what Jesus has talked about all along, throughout Matthew, from the very beginning right up to the very end, is repentance. Repentance and seeking God's forgiveness. And I believe that this person at the banquet, this, I'm assuming it's a guy, this guy, if he just asks for forgiveness, he'll get it. And he'll be fine. And the reason I think that matters is because there will come times when we will lack a robe. And every single time we lack a robe, we can ask for forgiveness from God and rejoice because we know we will be forgiven every single time by the God who invites us to the feast, the God who keeps inviting us and everyone else to come to this feast. Because God's banquet is for all people. That, the parable says it so powerfully. The good and the bad. They get invited and they get to go. All are welcome at this feast. All are welcome in this place. You are welcome. Will you come? Will you be here at the feast? 
God says, come. All you who are weary, come. All you who are broken, come. All you who are in need, come. All of you, come. You have a place here. You have a place prepared for you, a place that is waiting for you. Come to the feast prepared for you by God. Come, because you really have nothing better to do. Amen. Okay, we continue now with the words of our faith, the confession of our faith, using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Let us take a moment to share God's peace with those we are with this morning. As always, we thank you so much for your support of our ministry here at St. Luke's, your prayers and your thoughts and your expressions of love for God and for our congregation are powerful, and they have blessed us and sustained us throughout all of these days. We also thank those of you who have continued to support us financially. We know it's tough for some of you to, to do that. We know money is tight for a lot of folks, but for those of you who have been able to support us, we, we do appreciate that very, very much. And... Um, Yes, it's listed on the back of your bulletin um, how you can continue to support us financially if you are able. Um, we, we thank you for your generosity in every way. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world through the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious host, fill your church with a spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God as they invite others to your table of boundless grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures that are mistreated. Restore valleys, mountains, and pastures, and still and running waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Lord, in your mercy, hear our care. Gracious host, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill. We pray for those who are affected by Hurricane Delta and all those who have been affected by the numerous hurricanes this storm season. We pray for those of our family and friends and loved ones who are ill in mind, body, or spirit, especially those we lift up before you now. We lift up to you this day those afflicted by COVID-19, those who are in the hospital, those who have recently been released from the hospital, those who are sick at home, that you would speed their healing with your healing power, that you would provide the medicines and the treatments that are needed. 
that you would bless with your holy wisdom those who are looking for better treatments, vaccines, and new answers. We pray for those who are anxious and afraid, those who have lost work and are seeking work, those who unfortunately have given up looking for work, all who are struggling financially, emotionally, physically because of this disease. We pray for your hope to come upon us, for your patience to fill us, for your power to strengthen us. Remind us always that you walk beside us and that you walk hand in hand with us and that as always, you are leading us to that new and better and brighter day. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see to the needs of all who are sick or ill in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, when we are quick to judge outward appearance, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray for all ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Assure us of your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray as one. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Eternal God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Our song this morning is This is Amazing Grace. Power of sin. 
amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set Once again, thank you all for being here with us. Um, be well, be safe, have a great week in the Lord, be a blessing to someone this week, and now go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God.